Hi, I'm Jay Martin. This is TW Replays. Somebody had asked me to describe the various types of cavalry, what the strengths and weaknesses are. I thought that was a good idea. And the short version is you should be using either Lancers or Shooter Cav. Turn the video off now, go about your Saturday. But we can take a few minutes to uh, describe maybe some scenarios where the other types of cavalry would be useful. And I would be kind of brief and not get super technical. Warren, go ahead and make a companion video where you describe the exact mechanics of charge bonuses and such. But I'm just going to try to be a little bit brief. Now the three relevant statistics you're looking at with a cav unit are the charge bonus, melee attack, and melee defense. And the cav kind of come in two flavors. They are light cavalry and heavy. The light ones move a little bit faster, regenerate stamina faster, but their melee stats are generally worse. The heavy cav, excuse me, the heavy cav are actually wearing armor. This dude, there we go. A French word I've never learned to pronounce properly, cuirassier, cuirassier. This dude's actually wearing armor, the chest plate, the cuirassier is the word for the chest plate, and that's kind of their defining capability. The heavy cab, you notice, generally will have higher melee attacks, and they're resistant to morale shocks. So, let's start with the, um, oh gosh, where'd I put it? Let's start with the light cavalry. There are three types here. The, the first is the hussar, and France doesn't have regular hussar, they just have this one guard unit. Um, but as an example, Hussars have kind of a middle-of-the-road charge bonus and then middle-of-the-road melee and defense. So this unit doesn't have, like, an explicit strength. It's just kind of a unit. Like, if you think of the Portuguese cavalry, it's just kind of like, hi, we're cavalry, and that's kind of what a Hussar is. But it's a light cav, so it moves fairly fast. I mean, it can tie up in a infantry. It just doesn't really have an explicit strength or whatever. So you don't see people playing Hussars very often. Mostly what you see instead is people bringing the Lancer. The feature of the Lancer is the really high charge bonus of 38 in this case. And by contrast, even the heavy cab units will have about half of this, around 18 or 19. And so our melee stats are then weak here because we're light cavalry, but we're holding a big-ass lance. So we have a big charge bonus. So the pattern of play you want to use with these guys is you charge them in, get the big shock hit, cause all your casualties there, but then you need to pull them back out because they can't have a sustained melee fight. And that requires a little more micro on the player's part. So if you think you can pull that off, then the Lancer is a really, really good idea. Um, the flaw is if you don't pull the Lancer out, then you're not getting all the value out of them that you're kind of paying for. So Lancers are really asking you to be a little bit more micro and to control them better. The third type of light cav, and only a handful of factions have these, are the shooter cav. Um, they have guns, so they have an actual ranged attack, and then really middle of the road on everything else. But again, back to pattern of play, the way you use these guys is you, you know, park them on the side of somebody's infantry unit and give them a bad choice. They can either sit there and get shot, or they can square and then get shot by your infantry. These guys can be fairly effective against enemy cavalry. They're better in maybe maps with more forest on them, as opposed to the Lancers, which want a bunch of free terrain where they can build up speed and get the big charge in. So there's your shooter cav or middle of the road, but the um, ranged attack is very, very powerful. And then we start talking about the heavy cav, and most nations have some version of Dragoon. Um, historically, the Dragoon would use their horse for mobility or to get into position and then dismount and fight his infantry. I'm not sure I've ever used that ability in the game, but you could do that if you wanted style points. Um, as the lower end heavy cavalry, our melee stats start to get bigger. And for example, the charge bonus is 17, just about half of what the Lancers is. Um, so this unit will stick around a little bit longer in melee. We start to get some bonus morale. I'm not super sure how relevant morale is to Cav. It would definitely depend on the context of the game. And we start to get resistant to morale shock. Again, not sure how relevant that ability is. The next unit up is the uh, this, this thing I can't pronounce again. 
again, our, our stats generally get a little bit bigger. Um, we're up to 11 morale now. That's pretty good. But we're paying a lot of money for this. And then the carabiner, would, we would consider a guard unit. It has the inspire ability. We're a pretty heavy cab unit by this point. But we cost a lot of money. In terms of most games, uh, you generally are bringing light cab just out of like money concerns. These units are cheaper. You want your 20 units. Um, and there's no real no real map comes to my mind where uh, you're like, I really want a carabiner for this situation. I'm, I'm not really ever seeing that. I think the Lancer and the Shooter Cav generally accomplish any goal you'd want in any given game, and they're cheaper. I don't know. If somebody has an idea, feel free to leave a comment where you think heavier cab are definitely um, a better choice. And then I think the breakdown on whether you want the light cab, or excuse me, the lancer or the shooter, maybe hinges on kind of what your plan is. Is there a bunch of forest on this map? You know, something like that. But th that's kind of what all these different units kind of do. And then I was a little curious, and uh, so in a very unscientific experiment here, I uh, had a game just with some militia units on the other side, and I figured I'd charge Adam and see what happened. And there's our militia spawning over there. I was unable to uh, get a scenario where somebody would walk in front of me and turn fire at will off. So we'll just see what happens. And again, these are malicious, so they're going to perform a little bit worse than an actual line of tree unit would. So again, not scientific, but we'll see what happens. And the Lancers... Lancers start. Come on. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. So, defensible. We got 120. They're actually going to get some shots here. So the Lancer's going to hit with maybe 37 out of 45. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so defensible. We are at 119. The Lancer starts to hit. 20 casualties happen pretty quick. It looks like the rest of the Lancer is hitting now. There's 30. And in the next few seconds, we wind up with 40 casualties. So we get 40 some casualties off of that Lancer charge and then that, that triggers the route. I was a little curious how the various move commands affected things. So the first Lancer actually, you know, we right clicked on the fencible, kind of like we're targeting there. And the second one, I was curious if you put a move command behind the unit and the cap hit it, what would happen? Because I see players do this sometimes. So there's our move command that's going to take us through the path of the infantry. And what happens? The answer is the fencible quite clearly doesn't get the charge bonus hit. About seven casualties are dealt as the Lancer runs through. Okay, eight. But that's clearly not the charge bonus hit. All right. Well, I thought that was interesting. Next up is the Dragoon. So now we're on heavy cap. Yeah, pull back now. And what you would expect from the Dagoon is less hits on the charge. And the Dagoon is fully engaged now. But the Dagoon did 40 casualties on the charge and the follow-up. I was kind of didn't expect that. It makes me wonder if there isn't some kind of hidden modifier where Heavy Cav get a hidden modifier to charge bonus or something. I was a little surprised by that. Here comes the Curacier. And the field's getting messy here, so take this with a grain of salt, maybe. 
indispensable. Horses are starting to hit. Love the dudes flying in the background. That's cool. Definitely less charge bonus here. About 30, maybe. So that was a little interesting. Hmm. Who do we got next? And then this is the Carabiner. I would expect the performance of the Carabiner and the Curse to be kind of similar. Oops. They deal about 30 casualties on the initial hit, yeah. Okay. And then I was curious about another thing. Notice all of the charges at this point have been sort of in the, you know, more boxy formation. What happens when you stretch the unit out and charge? So we send a charge kind of like that. We're strung out on this line. And the unit um, is just so wide that it's going to... You know, we're going to get caught in the general staff. A lot of the unit hits the fensible. Maybe a slightly um, slower hit, but kind of dealt the same amount of casualties in the end. I think the weakness of the width is you might get caught on just another unit. Uh, last up, I sent a shooter cab in. I should have paused a little bit. The observation here is that the Shooter Cav don't get much of a charge bonus, and they take a long time in melee. They just don't deal casualties that well. So Shooter Cav aren't great in melee. Um, they will pin a unit down, so your infantry can shoot at it, so that's fine. But um, obviously the strength of the Shooter Cav is they have ranged attacks, and they're not great as you know Hussars. You want to use them in a pinch, go for it. But that's what you're getting. You're not getting much of a melee stat out of the shooter cab. And then last up, let's get the uh, fifth regiment of hussars in there. I was just curious how these guys would perform. And they seem to get a reasonable. This unit started around 90. We did about 30 casualties on the hit, so charge bonus here was surprisingly useful. Um, a couple of observations. Uh, again, consider the varying costs of the units. The Lancer performed just as well as all of the Heavy Cav did and gives you some perks. We're a little bit faster. We are more likely to pull the unit out and get a second use out of it, whereas you're sort of incentivized to let the Heavy Cav charge and stay in melee, meaning I would expect the Heavy Cav unit to sustain more casualties over time, whereas you can reuse the Lancer more often. Um, the Shooter Cav performed quite poorly in melee, but again, you're thinking about patterns of play, how you expect to use those. With the cost consideration and the performance of the various units, I think this points to Lancers and Shooter Cav are kind of always the best option. And no real map um, comes to my mind where I'm like, at this particular part of this particular map, I'd really like to have a Dragoon. Um, kind of not seeing that. So I think the question devolves down to, uh, does the map have a lot of forests on it? Maybe that shooters get better because Lancers get weaker. Lancers need a lot of terrain to move around on. Um, maybe what's the matchup against your particular opponent? If you're playing GB, the Shooter Cav get, get really strong. Um, other things you could think about, um, do you expect your opponent to hit their squares? If you expect them to, then Shooter Cav get better and Lancers get a little bit worse. Is your Micro better or worse? If your Micro is a little bit worse, then Lancers get a little worse and Shooter Cav get a little bit better. So these are some questions um, about the context of the game that you're playing and which one is better. In the end, I don't think the distinction between Lancers and Shooters is really that big. You kind of just prefer the light cav of some type um, just because they're cheaper and they can accomplish basically the same thing that all the heavy cav units can do. And again, kind of short and sweet. 
those are some generally vague answers to the question of which cab unit should I be using and how do they perform differently. If you have some thoughts or ideas, by all means, leave a comment. I'd be interested to have a discussion about it. Um, if there's, you know, a particular scenario where you think the heavy cab are really, really good. And again, it varies by nation, particular unit type too. That's interesting. But looking at the French cab, that's kind of how I would conclude. Um, again, my name is Jay Martin. If you have an idea for a kind of tutorial video, by all means, leave a comment and I'll try to get to that. Have a great weekend. See you in the next video.